Hello, you are in uh, Dunnock is my name, Dunnock O'Tangana, and uh, I'm living here in East Cork, and uh, I got a heritage grant from the Cork County Council to make barn old nest boxes, and this is an example of one of them, and uh, we're putting them up around in quite rural barns uh, throughout East Cork to try and um, help increase the, the population of barn owls in East Cork. This is a barn owl nest box, this is an interior interior nest box as opposed to exterior. Interiors are cheaper to make, I think they're easier to make, uh, they last longer and they're probably easier to put up as well so you get more bang for your buck on an, on an internal box. And this, these are, this is, an, this is the, the box that, uh, one of the boxes I made with the, the grant from the Heritage Council and, uh, and Cork County Council uh, Heritage Grant. And um, you get five, nine, nine mil ply uh, hardwood ply, there's no softwood, I can't get my hands on softwood in Ireland, so 9mm hardwood ply, it's about 30 euros a sh 27 euros a sheet, 2x1 um, timber batten, um, they're about uh, 5 euros a length, uh, you need about 3 of those, and uh, the whole thing to put together, well, well to cut the pieces out will take you about 20 minutes, 20 minutes, and to put it together will take about an hour, you know, so between driving to the co-op and back and everything else, you'd want to give yourself probably half a day if it was your first time making one. Um, but that's the box anyway, and that's put up inside in the shade. And I've got a galvanised band in here on the sides, uh, attached to the back of the corrugated iron inside in the shade, make it nice and stable. And it would be on side in, uh, on one of the timbers up high in the shade, as high as possible is where you put it. Um, and the, the shelf is very important, and the, and the depth is very important. And uh, the deeper, the better. The the owlets are very curious, so uh, they're mad keen to get up and have a look out as soon as they can. So the deeper it is, the older they have to be before they get up, and therefore less likely they have to fall out. Let's say, uh, and that's the reason for the platform as well in front, so that they can actually come out. And eventually, you'll have one on the platform. You might even have one standing on the box, and you have a younger one maybe inside in the box. Um, uh, and so that's what a barn owlet's box looks like, and it is very big. This is the hole here is five by five uh, inches, five inches by five, and. Uh, Plenty size for a barn owl, and uh, it's a matter of putting it up and then nearly forgetting about it. And uh, it's just a waiting game after that. And you could be waiting, you could, you could be waiting 20 years before they take it up, and they may never take it up. Um, if you don't put it up, they're not going to move into it. You know? So um, that's the barn owl nest box. Adam McCarthy is my name, I'm from Cork City, and I am the barn owl research officer with Birdwatch Ireland. Uh, so we're out today just doing a bit of barn owl ringing with Dunica. So Dominic has been doing some mighty work out in East Cork. Uh, we'll forgive him for being a carry man in East Cork because he's doing some good work for our barn owls, which is great. Um, so he's put up, at this stage, 71 nest boxes. Um, so what we're doing is we're just visiting the nest boxes under licence um, from the National Parks and Wildlife Service. And we're just seeing if uh, how many of the nest boxes are being occupied at the moment by barn owls. So, so far, um, he's having really good, some really good success. So, fingers crossed, we'll find some more barn owl nests uh, in the boxes today. So, how long has this? Nest box been up. I think it's uh, year three now for this one, and the nest is every year. It's up four years, and it's been occupied for three. You know, so this is a historical site. You know, so they were here before, uh, in an old building that's since gone. And so when the box was put up, it was only up a year when they, they moved in. So fantastic. You know, so, um, and it's, 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 it's uh, the farmer uses the shed to store machinery. So. Uh, like there's no cattle coming in here or, or sheep coming in here. And especially sheep, I think, are probably the, the worst because it's such a quiet shed in January, February when they decide to occupy it. And then the uh, lambing starts in March, which is April, and it gets really noisy really quickly. And they're not used to it and they, they abandon uh, quite often. But, uh, and that really is the crucial time as well for Barn now, sort of that February, March period when the, when the pair will be finding the nest site and mm. occupying the nest site. Uh, and that box is up about four years, yeah. and hopefully another maybe uh, 20 years in the box, please God. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. you come into a barn, you want to know if they're in the barn, you're looking for evidence of the, in the barn. But looking at the box there, it looks quite clean. There's no whitewash, or white droppings on it. So you, you'd be forgiven for thinking there wasn't anything in the box, you know, but you go around and look and looking down here at this stone here, it just seems to be well splattered with. Uh, Whitewash, you know, and, and, and with the birds play, just you just have white droppings, and they're quite big as well. 
Is it white wash here anyway? And a pellet there, and there's another pellet there, and there's a bit of a pellet there. And that's recycling, you know, that they were up on that beam uh, coming and going in onto the box. So when you see this here, you have a fair idea. It's, it's really just point to the very high probability that they're actually inside the box and using the box. You know, so uh, that's what you look for first, Adam. Yeah. yeah, and so that sort of sign searching applies for various different sites as well. So when you're going to, you know, ruined castles, ruined mansions, you don't, you rarely actually look up. You're most often looking down, you're looking for the whitewash, you're looking for the pellets. You're also looking for molted feathers of the adults, but I can't see any in here anyway. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really good sign that a, that a site is active and potentially a nest yeah. site. And if you look under the box there, there's more as well. Under the box would be a really good site for the whitewashing pellets again, you know. just a tarsus measurement so that we can figure out the best ring size to put on it. So a tarsus is 6.4 millimeters, which is fairly standard, fairly normal for, for barn owls. So with that, with that tarsus size, they take what we call an F ring. So each ring has a unique number on it, so that if this bird turns up elsewhere, either alive or uh, more often than not unfortunately dead, we know exactly where it came from and what age it was. So it's just, uh, it's just slightly awake, so I'll just use a bag to keep it nice and calm. So the ring fits on the leg, just like a wristwatch. Yeah, so the first thing that we do after ringing the bird is we just determine what sex it is. So you can tell whether they're ma male or female based on the coloration. So males or females tend to be darker than males. So the most, uh, most clear indication of sex is what we call flecking. So you get kind of black flecking on the breast and the underwing. So if I gently blow the down, you can see the feathers underneath. So pretty much all of those feathers are pure white. There's no black, black flecking or black speckling. And it's the same for the underwing as well. You can see all those underwing feathers there are all pure white. So that, that amount of pale coloration tells us that this is a male.
get a fairly accurate indication as to what age uh, the birds are based on how much feather on the seventh primary has unfurled from the pin. So you can see there the tops of the feather of the primary feathers are still in pin. So this is just how they grow and develop. And as the bird gets older, the feather elongates and the amount of sheath on the pin gets shorter. So if we just measure the amount of feather unfurled from the pin on the seventh primary, we can tell roughly how many days old it is. So that's 100 millimeters. We're looking at this handy guide. You can see that around 100 millimeters is around 47 days old. So this chick is around 47 days old, plus or minus a day or two. So that wing is 212 millimeters. So that's everything done for this bird. So this bird is particularly pale. You can see on the wing, there's very little barring. So hopefully one of the other birds will be a female and you'll see that there's quite dark barring all along the wing. This is the youngest chick and you can see that it's quite different to the older to one of the older chicks and this has quite the dark barring. So it's still a male, but you can see it's a lot more extensively barred than the than the other male in this nest. See it also has a lot more down. So that down will shed over the next two weeks and it will look like a look like a proper bar now. Let's see. For that poo. There's a skull there. Yeah. Helen. Very nice. It's a great way to the true. Mm. Okay, so this species first discovered in 2007 in the pellets of Barn Owl and Kestrel. So they're spreading throughout the country at a very rapid rate. They were first found in County Tipperary, but now they're found throughout at least half of the island. And yes. they're very much uh, favoured by Barn Owls as well.
and he's to you in the dark. Box, right? If you think of the box, uh, like they call a barn old, but uh, and this is a barn, but in most barns, what they might call a modern barn, uh, there's no cavities in them, so there's no place for them to nest. And I think they call it barn olds because of the old barns that would have had uh, thick stone walls and they would have nested on the ledges. But in the, what you might consider a modern barn now, there is no cavity. So if this box didn't go up in here, there would be no place for them to nest in here, and uh, so therefore they wouldn't be here. And um, so it's one of the number of different things that's very important in our conservation is that they do have adequate nest sites in suitable areas in the country. And so that's what the uh, Cork County Council, the Heritage Council's grant is for, is to put up by our own nest boxes in suitable areas where there are, are no suitable nesting sites already. You know, so um, this is a prime example of it and it's, uh, it's working perfectly. The, the Baron Old Nest Project has been on the road now with, with three years and this it's been a great experience. Uh, I've learned lo lo learning loads, uh, and uh, as well as that, what I'm doing, it, it really is, is it, it's applied. You know, there's, you can see a practical benefit. Um, you know, there's there's six six this year, six barn old boxes were occupied, and I know there's 70, 71 of them up, and and more to go. Uh, and you might think the six isn't much, but it's actually in, in the great scheme of things, it's, it's very good for only three years because you know, being Rodi uh you know, good things are slow and. Uh, um, you know, there was a time when there was only two or three barn owl nest, nests known in uh, East Cork, and now there's over 20 because of going out there and, you know, like, as they say, networking and talking to farmers. So quickly, there was a time when I only knew a couple of farmers, two or three farmers in East Cork, and so, yeah, it's at least, I'm up in over the hundreds now at this stage. Uh, um, as I say, oh, it's all beneficial, everything is everything is positive, um, and that's it's so enjoyable, you know, because um, you put the time in and the results come. You know, and not only talking to the farmers, but uh, you know, you'll be chatting to Conor Nelligan, and he's in the Cork County Council, the Heritage Officer. Uh, there's a connection made with the, the Heritage Council as well, and Birdwatch Ireland with with Alan, Alan McCarthy. Um, and you're always picking their brain, and every conversation you come out more knowledgeable than the one, than when you went in. You know, so it's just, it's all good, and it's all upwards, and uh, uh, there's just it's all positive. And, uh, and 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 on top of all of that, then the, the results are coming. So. Uh, I couldn't be happier with it and um, I really look forward to the next couple of years and see where it goes because I, if you had asked me three years ago I wouldn't have told you that I had 71 boxes up. I remember putting up my first one and, th and thought it was great uh, and you know, but as I said being Ruddy Mahamoul and so, you know we're, we're from here just you know, more nest boxes more conservation and um, again all positive and delighted.